So hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new to this channel, my name is David Fredrickson, 51 year old type one diabetic. I've done quite a bit from nutrition, supplementation, fad diets, training methods from CrossFit to calisthenics to home workouts to bodybuilding type stuff. And I'm here to share my experience with you guys. And in today's video, I wanna talk about IF. It's a very popular diet out there. It's pretty much one of the most searched terms, I think, on Google right now. And uh, IF, I am very well versed in IF. It was the first diet that was introduced to me by my buddy Clarence. What's up, CMZ, if you're watching the video? And I lost a good 25 pounds on the diet. And at that time I was doing CrossFit. And it was a book that was written by, I think it was a baseball player that actually did IF. And it he wrote out exactly how it worked for him. This was way before it was popular, eight years ago. And you pretty much ate within maintenance, within the timing. And I didn't have my fitness pal at that time. I don't know if it was available eight years ago or if I just didn't want to spend money on it, but I hand wrote everything out, all my macros. So thank God for my fitness pal, because I remember that was, that was something else, keeping track of that all the time. And it was a enjoyable diet because of the fact that I was, was never somebody who loved to eat in the morning. Okay. So I could run, have a cup of coffee and run off and didn't get hungry until 12 or seven o'clock. So it worked for me. And I did the 16, eight, there's different forms of them, but the 16, eight is the most popular. And that's when you fast for 16 hours and you eat for eight hours. So you can, you can eat between 12 and eight and, and then fast the rest of the time. There's also a five, two, there's all kinds of different ones out there, but we're going to get right into this. Cause I want to talk about the benefits that are being told out there to sell this diet to you. And I want to let you know that there is no proven studies, no proven human studies on the autophagy effect, the cell stem cell activation, uh, the blood pressure, the all the health benefits that go along with actual dieting alone. So what I want to say is there hasn't been any studies and they haven't actually compared apples to apples from an IF to a caloric energy restricted diet, pretty much, which is basically a very regular very standard diet where you watch your calories. So they really haven't compared the two. But and what they're not telling you, just like when when uh, my last keto video, if you haven't seen it, I'll put a a card up here to go check it out because you might want to do it if you're interested in keto is if you lose weight in general, if you exercise, if you eat properly, you're going to have all these benefits as well. OK, so I just want to make that clear and I have nothing against IF. It is the diet that I've done multiple times over the years. And the reason why I've done it was to lose quick weight. So every time I changed, changed from like CrossFit to bodybuilding, to calisthenics, to the quarantine time here, you'll see a video that I'll put a card right here where I did IF when I jumped into the quarantine because I wanted to, what I like to do is if I'm going to try a new training method, I don't want to have the residual effect of another training method if that makes sense to you when I try something new to see how it does for me. So I pretty much reset my body. So it's a way for me to lose weight fairly fast. And the problem is, and, and I had no problem with this because, but, but you might, um, the problem is, is you, they just did a study and I, I knew this because this is why I reset my body. When, like when I went from the gyms to the quarantine time, my arms were close to 18 inches my body, uh, around. And when I stopped the IF diet, I lost about 25 pounds, which I've lost that much on other diets. And my arms were down to like 17 and a quarter. So quite a bit of lean body mass loss. Now, the reason why I'm, I decided to do this video is because a lot of you guys don't know that there is a new study out that the participants, when they did the study, and what's the interesting thing is one of the individuals that ran the study was an IF advocate and decided to stop doing IF after this. 
And the reason why is because they found that the IF group compared to a calorie restricted group, when you're comparing apples to apples, as far as macros and everything, lost, I think it was 40 to 50% lean body mass along with the weight that they lost. And the weight loss was the same between each group. And usually when you diet down, you're going to lose 20, 30% muscle. That's just normal standard. So don't expect to spare all the muscle you gain at the gym. If you decide to go into a caloric deficit and lose 20, 30 pounds, you're going to lose muscle. So it's normal for you to lose muscle, but not that much. So it surprised him enough to where he decided that, nope, that's not for me. And one reason is if you are well versed in all the studies, which I'm trying to keep up on everything. I'm always interested. I got my computer always with me and I'm always punching up PubMed and things in here and, and, uh, and reading studies. If you read most of the studies, all the studies done, even if you do a meta-analysis on intermittent fasting, whether it's weight loss and uh, the, the cell aggregation, the, you know, regeneration and all that stuff, there's no conclusive evidence for this. And at the end of each study, they always say more research needs to be done because this was only done on rodents pretty much. So I'll, like I said, I'll put, I don't know if I already said this, but I'll put the links to the few studies that, that I have in my, my bookmarks here, just in case you guys want to go read them, if you don't believe me. So given that about IF, uh, losing that much muscle mass brings me to like, I want to, if you guys decide to try the diet, it can be worked and it can work well for you. You can spare muscle and still come out with some good lean gains, but a few things. You have Dr. Berg, you have Thomas DeLauer. You know how I love him. I just did a video on him. Put a card up here for you. <laughs> it's gonna be here or it's gonna be here. I always point to the wrong spot. It's like I said in my last video. But um, they talk about training fasted. Now, Everything that you get, that they're claiming you get from IF, that they make a big deal about, you get normally. You can, you can fast for five hours. You can eat every five hours. You can still produce ketones. You can still have the autophagy effect. You can still have, when you lose weight, you can still better your blood pressure. You can still increase your insulin sensitivity. So from my experience, if you try IF and your goal is to lose weight and spare as much muscle as possible, do not train fasted. Train within your eight hour window after your first meal or make, your, make, make an extra 20 grams of protein down before you train and then have your first meal. So it's not going to make a big difference because 20 grams of protein, protein itself is not stored in the body like carbs and fats are. You eat too many carbs, you eat too much fat, they're stored, everything's stored in your body. The body doesn't store protein. So even if you had protein, and this is the way I was going to present it for those that want to lose weight and uh, maintain their muscle. This is another way that I've done it before, was because the body doesn't store protein, but there is a cap for protein. So there will be a point to where if you eat too much protein and they've kind of figured it's right around over 50 grams, so your body just won't process, you know, for muscle building after 50 grams of protein. So what happens is if you eat more than that, your body will use the protein as energy for the body, whether it's for glucose through gluconeogenesis or some other component. So if you, if you want to try this approach, you will still get the same caloric restriction in it and you still get the effect as far as you're not storing anything, you're not using anything other than spiking your muscle protein. Since this is, if you train in the morning like I do, you have a protein shake of 20 grams before and have a, a protein shake of 20 grams, you know, within an hour after you train afterwards. And then you jump into your fasting where you're only fasting fats and you're fasting carbohydrates, which are the stored energy or this, you know, stored macros that are actually used as energy in your body that which contribute to weight gain and weight loss. This way you're spiking muscle protein synthesis more throughout the day, those two extra times rather than just within that window. So that's one way to do it. Because if you don't, if you try to train fasted in the morning, if you train in the morning and you don't eat for two, three hours after you train, 
you are going to lose muscle along with that weight. You will not gain anything. I've experienced it. Like I said, I put everything to the test. Now, if you do decide to listen to Delauer or Berg or some of these other guys out here that have their neat little videos and their chalkboards and their and all, all big words that they can say, and they say to train fasted, you make sure you eat immediately after. Take my advice right. Boom. Right when you walk out of that workout, you have a, you have 20 grams or more of protein. You spike that spike that muscle protein synthesis right away. Okay. So that's for those that are trying to use the diet to maintain muscle. If you want to gain muscle on that diet, literally you have to train, you have to eat at maintenance and you literally have to do the protein method. Um, when, when you do have to actually eat every some kind of protein every three to four hours uh, to gain muscle. It's just, that's just the way it is. Or you have to make it work to where you get the ample amount of protein within that eight hour window, which is usually for most people, it's three meals. And don't think that if you eat three meals, if I'm 200 pounds, I can only eat 50 grams of protein per meal. And I know that could be close to that 0.85 to one gram. They say you can still build muscle out of, but if you really want to build muscle, you have to be at that one gram, 1.2 grams to actually build muscle. So it's in the long run. So you're kind of like stuck between a rock and a hard place and you have to find that extra, like if I'm doing 50 grams in three meals, that's 150 grams of, of protein if you're following me and I need 50 more grams if I'm 200 pounds of protein somewhere in there. So I have to make that work in order to build muscle. Now, you can maintain and lose weight, but you just want to make sure that you are eating within that time frame, eating something, some protein to spike muscle protein, protein synthesis right before, or just really being on that diet within that eight hour time frame. But do not train fasted and leave your workout fasted for more than more than an hour. Because I know people talk about there is no anabolic window, but there is in certain cases. And in IF, there is an anabolic window. So I hope I cleared all that up. If you guys have any questions or comments on that, leave it down below. Now, I want to get into the idea of weight loss alone. So if you're somebody that's just sed sedimentary, if I'm saying that right, just sitting around, you don't really work out, I mean, you go for a walk and, and walking is okay to do fasted, then IF is is good. But you, they say you can eat whatever you want. But just like with the keto diet, you can't eat whatever you want. To lose weight, you have to be restricted. Calories have to be restricted. So even though you might be switching off to ketones more often or this and that, it doesn't freaking matter. I'm, look, uh, my diet is 25, 0 0.25 to 0 0.30 fat intake right now. I'm super lean, gaining muscle. And my carbs are 300. I'm no genetic freak or anything like that. The protein's one gram. That's the that's that's actually the diet that you do for lean. This is the diet that the bodybuilders do. Bodybuilders never go to get real lean. They don't go below 200 grams of carbs usually. So it's not the carbohydrates that make you fat. It's not being in ketosis. It's not this and that. It's eating too much, too much of things. Not enough of protein. It's eating. It's it's training to not really build muscle to, to spike your metabolism. And a lot of people don't know this, but carbohydrates actually spike your metabolism because they 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 activate your thyroid hormone to activate. T3 and T4, which boosts your metabolism. So eating carbs after you train, I've noticed that my metabolism, when I've been doing this over the years, is just kicking butt. It's just flying after the workout. So not eating carbs after you train, yeah, you can burn fat as well. But you know, if you're like me, I feel like crap if I don't eat anything well, you know, substantial for energy after because I go off to work. So there's a lot of things that are mis misconstrued and lead people in the wrong direction and i'm trying to clear this stuff up in the best way i can i hope all that makes sense and if it doesn't like i said i have no problem answering any questions down below now going back to the the person who's just you know not really training but just walking and stuff like that i have a, a great way to manipulate your calories or your caloric intake because you know if you eat within an eight hour or you even squeeze it down to a six hour time frame you can only eat so much the only problem I found when I was training people that I would put on the diet is those that have eating disorder disorders that actually 
you know, depression, um, don't feel good about themselves. And when things happen around the house with the kids, whatever, they, they turn to food. It doesn't work in the long run because they haven't corrected that and they tend to eat more than they should. And they think, oh, I'm on this wonderful, magical diet I have. So I eat, I can, oh, I can have, you know, two handfuls of almonds on top of, you know, what I've just eaten before night because almonds are healthy. But yeah, almonds pack a punch to your caloric intake when with the fats that are in it. So there, there's just, there are certain things. So you want to make sure the diet works for you. If you're somebody that doesn't like to eat in the morning and you can eat during the day, I mean, later on in the day, like, like I am to do the diet, it can really fit your lifestyle. If you're somebody that actually wakes up in the morning and craves food, but then doesn't crave it after five o'clock, you can do the, you can do the eight hour window in the morning. And there are some people out there that don't like to eat at night. Uh, uh, some people I've trained, they're just like, I can't eat at night. I mean, then it works perfect for you. And if you're not a, uh, emotional eater, it can work for you. So I hope I'm trying to think if there's anything else before I go, because all this stuff has been off the top of my head because I want to deliver honest. I want to be honest. I want to be real with you guys on, on camera here. I want to be honest with my, everything I'm saying. So I don't think there's anything else. So this is Dave and don't forget to subscribe to the channel somewhere over here. I'll get it. I think it's on this side, but it could be on this side. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave any comments, any questions you have down below. I'll be glad to answer them. I may not get back to them right away, but I'm usually back to them within, you know, a few hours. So you guys have a wonderful day or night, wherever you are and stay strong, stay motivated, stay positive. We'll see you next time.